Coming up on today's Locked On Senators, we're joined by a proud dad. It's Luciano Mandelazzi, who talks about how his life has been flipped upside down, spun around, and now he's back home after watching his son earn his first NHL win in his first NHL game. And with the two starting goalies out in Ottawa, maybe people think that's a problem, but there's two great young goalies in the system now. Who is going to start the next game on Friday? We will be boots on the ground and give you all the information you need to know if you're heading to the rink with or on the Locked On Senators shuttle. And it's all coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Senators podcast. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. I'm Jake Sanderson, and you're listening to Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Tim Stützle, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators Podcast. And welcome to episode 637 of the Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba, alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains. And those locations are when we're recording, because when you're listening to this, I will be 10,000 feet in the air, and Pillsy will be counting down kilometers to the nation's capital. Ross, I'll be uh, getting in my kayak as last time uh, I was heading to Ottawa and I posted a picture beside a river and everyone's like, how you getting here, canoe? I, can you pull that up here as I tee up today's show? Because we've got a great one for you and thank you for making us your first listen on this Wednesday, February 15th. Yesterday we got in to the Mackenzie Weger discussion and how interesting it could be if he's somehow, some way moved for a second time in about six months with a eight-year contract extension in between them. So catch up on that. We also had Mark Mathot on Monday's show, and it's been a highs week on the postcast. The postcast, always a lot more fun after wins, and the Senators are stacking them all one on top of the other right now. Pilsy, which of the last two wins do you like the most? I mean, this is an easy answer for me. It's the last win up against the New York Islanders for so many reasons, Ross. Well, the the top reason I got to watch that full game, the Mad Sogard game, I was in the air for the third period, arguably the only good part of the game for the Ottawa Senators uh, I missed. But not only the fact Kevin Mandeleze finally gets his NHL debut, something that I have been really pushing for here, and I knew he was ready for an opportunity, and... He proved me pretty right as he stops 46 out of 48 shots in the shootout, stops both shooters and Ross. Not only that, but that was a crucial win up against a team that the Ottawa Senators are chasing in the Eastern Conference wildcard race. So the last game takes the cake for me. I mean, I'm just so happy for Mando, but that's not to downplay Mad Sogard incredible effort up against the Flames as well. I'll go Monday because it was a win. It was at home and it was when other fans had started leaving the stadium with the two goals in a span of 52 seconds in the final two minutes of the game. Are you kidding me? And then being able to finish it in overtime with Tim Stutzla sending the crowd home happy. I, I just love a good comeback performance in front of your home crowd. And Pilsy, my favorite thing happened in that game. When a team scores a goal while their last goal is yes. still being announced at home, you just cannot beat the vibe of that. But we're going to try to uh, replicate that vibe on Friday when the Locked On Senators podcast partners with the Glebe Central Pub to take two shuttles to the game. Those shuttle times have slightly switched. We'll tell you about that at the end of today's show. But Pilsy, the real discussion is who starts on Friday. Did Mando do enough to make it interesting for you? Or do you go back to Mads on home ice again? And this is a team where as long as the players up front do their job, should be able to beat the Chicago Blackhawks. Yes, absolutely. I, I believe both of these players are put into a position where I'm not really nervous about either one of them going up against the Blackhawks. Now, that's not to totally downplay them. It's still a professional hockey team. You got you to gotta stay sharp, and these points are important to the Ottawa Senators. So it's not a nonchalant situation here. But... In my mind, I think you go to Mad Sogard here. I think you need to see what you have from him. And I want to see him get in as many games as possible because 
that's your top goalie prospect. And at this point in the season, when you've got no uh, none of your NHL starters available due to injury, I think you should give Matt Sogard this opportunity. But a big part of me saying that is it's very likely that Mando's going to get another game here. If, if that was kind of it, maybe I would want to give Mando a shot. You got to ride the hot hand sometimes, and he certainly was absolutely scorching last night in his game with 46 out of 48 shots stopped. So I think you go with Mads Friday, and then you give Mando the start um, at home in St. Louis, which the the reference is perfect. The Mando, the Mandalorian, it's Star Wars night on that night in Ottawa. So I think that all just works out perfectly. And red versus blue, isn't that the two colors of the, the lightsabers? Usually it's red versus green, but uh, these days, I, I don't know, uh, they're mixing in a lot of different uh, lightsaber colors, Ross, so I, I'm not going to hold you to that. I'm sure our Star Wars fans will tell us, because I'm not completely caught up on the Mandalorian, so I just I just know the catchphrase is, this is the way, and Mando showed us that that was the way to have him start in that game. Well, you just blew our cover as well by saying Mando, Mando's performance yesterday, as this is our Thursday episode, Pillsy. Uh, you uh, you said we hadn't left yet, so our cover was already blown. You already doxed us, so the cover was blown already. You could have actually got me a different direction, and I feel so um, kind of caught red-handed myself now because I'm realizing, here's a little peek behind the curtain. If we record two episodes in the same day, we change our shirts for that. Oh, same different. outfit. Same outfit. That's tough. That's tough for me. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. But, Ross, this time I hope... I'm always so nervous doing the drive to Ottawa because there's, if anyone knows the drive from Collingwood to Ottawa, it's basically straight across, like through Algonquin Park, essentially. So there's about an hour and a half where I have no service. If you'll remember, Ross, when I was driving to the home opener of the uh, Toronto game, when Brady... Driving? <laughs> there it is. There's the picture I posted on my way to Ottawa. I'd had a lot of people confused. If you're just listening along, it's me beside a river. I believe that's called Furnace Falls. Check it out. Very nice area uh, to, to sit and stretch the legs a little from a sit. long drive. <laughs> a stand. <laughs> well, I was sitting by the river for a little bit, but I was standing. I was stretching. You know, it's about halfway on my drive. I drive past it every time I go to Ottawa, so that's perfect. But this is around the area where there's no service. And the one year I was driving to the home opener, and Brady Kachuk signed his massive deal while I was in no man's land. So I was living in a world where Brady Kachuk had not signed that deal yet. So. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll make sure to take another pick at Furnace Falls. Maybe I'll bring like a kayaking helmet, a life jacket, and uh, and a paddle if I've got one kicking Dude, around. No, you know what you need to wear? The goggles. Yeah, yeah, I'll get some goggles. <laughs> I mean, that's your homework assignment tonight as we're recording here on Wednesday night. So if there's been breaking news, you know, it's, it's like Pilsy driving to Ottawa. We are yeah. living in the past right now. But I'm going with, Ma- I'm going with Mads. It's it's a Friday night. It's at home, and I don't think he did anything in his start last Monday to not earn another start. You had the back to back. There's plenty yep. more, three more back to backs this month for the Ottawa Senators. And Camp Talbot isn't back practicing with the team yet. Mando's going to get another opportunity. Exactly. It doesn't have to be Friday. Mad's on Friday for me. And now let's chat with Mando's old man, an absolute beauty, Luciano. Mandalazy. I want to say that we first uh, interacted online with him, like right after Mando was drafted. Like he, he was, I, th- I think our account probably had like 500 followers. And uh, so he's, he's been it for the whole ride. And uh, it's awesome that he took the time. He's super busy. Obviously they, they hopped in the car. And that was actually an underrated part pills. I, I forgot that like Montreal is not that far from New York city. Yep. Not bad. Seven hours in the car. Like that, that's not bad. I'm doing six hours tomorrow, so yeah, I feel that. No doubt, you don't. You, or you six get hours watch. today. Six hours today. As you're listening, <laughs> there you go. Uh, all right, let's get to that interview with Luciano Mandalazzi. For more, we've had three postcasts, and this is our fourth episode this week, so plenty more to catch up on. But we're really excited to present this interview for you. And it is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel, guys. I am so excited that FanDuel is the official sportsbook partner of the Locked On Podcast Network. I mean, anytime you want to partner with someone, why not go with the number one people? They are the number one sportsbook in North America, an official sportsbook of the NFL. And what I love most about FanDuel is their app is simple, safe, 
and easy to use. It's secure. You're going to find so many different options there. You got money line, puck line, over unders, player props. A bunch of specials. They do promotions all the time. Check, check out the promotions tab. That's where I go every day when I'm looking to make my wagers. And Ross, if you want to have a bigger chance at bigger payouts, you can do same game parlays. I love doing that. I told you guys about FanDuel's cool option where you can bet who's the first team to get to five shots. That one hit last night for me. Cha-ching. You love to see it. And it's at FanDuel. But for our new customers in the States, it's a perfect time to join because if you get started, you're going to get $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash locked on. One more time, guys, place your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets, win or lose, at FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Now let's get to today's interview with Luciano Mandelazzi. All right, we now welcome a very special guest, a proud papa. It's Luciano Mandelazzi. Welcome to Locked On Senators, man. We've been interacting online for so many years. It's great to see you, and it was amazing to see you on TV last night. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a special night last night, that's for sure. I want you to just take me through from the moment you found out that Kevin was going to start an NHL game to right now. What's your world been like? Oh, honestly, uh, it's uh, uh, the, the beginning was easy. You got a text around, uh, I guess, 1230 at night. Kev was at the, on, on the plane or at the airport saying that uh, Zach confirmed that he was playing uh, last night. So then it's, uh, it was great. We're all excited. Uh, we knew it was going to happen one day. We didn't know exactly when, but uh, when, when it gets announced, it, it hits you like a ton of bricks. So we were really happy for Kev. So you know, we organized uh, the the dogs. So they had someone to take care of them. We picked up my older son, who lives a little bit uh, uh, south from where we are because of school. And uh, we drove down uh, the trip to Long Island, and uh, we were all very nervous, but all very happy for Kevin. We're just hoping for a good game and a uh, good performance from the team. So. Uh, we got a lot more than expected, so that's that's all great. Now, uh, Ross and I were talking. Both Ross and I are uh, goalies growing up, and we knew our parents had a lot of stress, but uh, not quite the same stress as the parents of an NHL debuting goalie. Take us through like what the highs and lows of watching your son in his NHL debut were. Let's start with the first shot. The first shot he gets and he saves it. How much of a, a relief is that? And you're like, okay. He stopped the first one. Now he can settle in. How are you feeling as the game started going here? Well, listen, you know what? Uh, as goalies, you guys know, uh, I, and I have two of my sons are goalie, and the other one's a defenseman. So you wow. kind of we kind of play defense in this family. We're we're not good up front. So <laughs> you just want him to get a couple of shots just to get the feel of the puck and get in the game. You know, everybody's always nervous before a game, but once the puck drops, well, you're in your zone and and you do your stuff, right? So you don't. You don't feel the pressure as much. So as soon as, soon as you get one or two pucks in the body or in the glove, blocker, pad, whatever, uh, you're in the game. So that, that's all I really wanted for him. And, and and you know, obviously I've seen my son play a lot of games throughout the years. So I saw that he was uh, he was in his zone. And I was confident we had a good game. But during the game, you never know what happens. Bounces here and there. But listen, you know what? Uh, he was solid. Uh, team played really well for him. Uh, and, and you saw the boys wanted it for him. Like, you probably don't see it on TV as much, but we were there live, and there's not a single person that wasn't happy for him and didn't want to win the game for him. So uh, it, was, it was really good. It was very emotional to see all that. It's, it's, it's something very special. Nobody's seen him play more than you. So how, what's the sign that Kevin's in his zone? Like, how did you know, okay, he's there? Because I know his first puck touch was actually going out behind his net. So able to kind of handle it. But what's a sign for you that he's in his zone? It, you, you saw, he, he was top of the crease. He was square to the shooter, to the puck. Uh, he was tracking the puck really well. Uh, his rebound control was really good. So uh, plus he loves to play the puck. My wife wish he didn't play the puck as much, <laughs> What do, you, what do you want to do, right? You always like to touch the putt. So uh, so th th those were good indications for me. So uh, like I said, I was confident he'd have a good game. And uh, 
and and the rest is obviously history right now. Even though even though we're still talking about it today, we're still on the cloud nine. Yeah. Yes, you are. I believe it. You talk about nervous moments and bounces. That one in the third period where it's just a rim around, but it comes out front. Did your heart skip a beat? Uh, yeah, I think my wife kind of put a nail or two in my leg, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was that was a nail biter for sure. <laughs> oh, awesome. There was, I mean, 48 shots. You can't have any nails left on your fingers. There was a lot of nail biters. And I mean, by the time you get to the shootout, like getting through three periods, getting through overtime is one thing, but each shootout attempt, uh, we were right there living and dying with you guys. Well, what was that like as you're waiting for for him to go one-on-one with uh, Bo Horvat, Kyle Palmieri, like some, some veteran NHLers here, and here's Mando, 22 years old, in his debut, stopping them. Listen, we, you know, we come from an honest family, so like when I still see my kid on the ice with these guys, and I say, he's a midget triple a and no one's being in the nhl with these guys and taking shots like this and it's 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 incredible but you know what uh my my two younger sons are goalies obviously kevin and jeremy sam was my defenseman and they always told me that you know what they don't like the overtime they rather go in a shootout to win the game so you know what it was in his hands uh he did his job uh, and uh, uh, Timmy and uh, Drake did their job, yeah. and uh, they came out with the win. So it was great. And like I said, I had confidence in him. I saw he was in his zone, so uh, I was confident he 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 uh, stopped some pucks. I'm not ner- normally nervous. I was last night, so <laughs> it was Fair. good to see the end of it. <laughs> we understand exactly why. Now, what do you think the people in Cape Breton think about that one? Having Drake score the game winner. And yeah. Kevin in goal, I know he spent some pretty important years up uh, there in Nova Scotia. Well, listen, uh, I still call Drake a kid because he's still got that baby face. But he, uh, his, you know, his grandparents, I still used to talk to them when I used to go and see Kev play in Cape Breton. And, and, and he wasn't there anymore. Uh, excellent people. And uh, they're, they're loved. I mean, Cape Breton was a great experience for my son. Uh, they follow all ex uh, Cape Bretoners like uh, Iggy and Drake and my son, and 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 they got a thrill out of seeing that that you know Kev made the stops, Drake scored the game winner. It was uh, it was great for them, and and it's you know it's great for Kev also and, and Drake. You know, they still have all that love back there. Now I'm always interested uh, with the hockey parents. I feel like dads and their kids have a certain relationship talking about the game but especially it's it's got to be interesting when it's a goalie because you're out there on your own as a goalie so obviously any support that Kevin can have from uh, you and the rest of your family is big what was it like leading up to the game are are you talking to him a lot is he being like dad I don't want to hear it I gotta focus like what's that dynamic there between you and Kevin uh listen uh, you know uh, obviously, he talks more to hockey about, to me than my wife. But as a family, including his brothers, we just like we just told him, and I, I didn't even speak to them the day of the game. I spoke okay. the night before, and I said, "Listen, you know what? It's a once in a lifetime. Don't overthink it. Go there, enjoy the game, enjoy the experience. You know, you're able to do it. You just got to do it. But like I said, most important is go out there and have fun, uh, because you know what." It's it, it's once in a lifetime. Trust yourself, have fun, and I'm sure everything else will go in line. There's 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 not much to overthink at that point, in my opinion. You know, just go out, have fun. That's it. Forty sure. six saves, pretty fun to win his first NHL <laughs> game. Where's the, where's the puck gonna go? Has has he has he found a home for it yet? Uh, he's got it. The the they kept it aside. The, Timmy picked it up for him. Yep. And, uh, Classy move there. by Timmy. Hundred percent. I told him I I I, lo- I love Timmy more than my BMW. <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs> but, uh, if I had a BMW, I, I would too. And uh, I, I love him more than than a lot of things. What a player, eh? Yeah, no, you know he's 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 he's. You listen, he did the same thing. Uh, he's 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 good with the goalies. He's, uh, you know, even even in even Brady after the game came out and congratulated us on Mando's win, and you know. 
they're a bunch of good young people. Uh, Shabby went and see him too. Like they, they have, it's a young team. They have good guys like Claude there, uh, but they have a really good chemistry and they're they're there for one another well, in good and bad. But like I said, you saw that they wanted the the game for Kevin for the team obviously too there, but uh, a good bunch of guys. Good and what can you say about his relationship with Mads? Because I know they've come up together over the last number of years. You know what? We had Mads over for supper, I think, about two years ago. I, I guess their first full year together. And the you, you know goalies, eh? You guys, uh, these guys push each other. They're able to critique each other, take it, and go forward, which is very special because it's, it's very rare that you're able to say, oh, you should have done this or you didn't do this properly. They take that and, and they push each other to be better. They're, they're close. They, they like, you know, at one point I joked with Kev because we got a third dog during COVID and it's our fourth Great Dane that we have. Yeah. So we joked with Kev and told him when we got the Great Dane, so you would have missed miss Mads during the summer. <laughs> they basically text or FaceTime each other almost every day. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. We, but we, they have a great relationship and, uh, they get along really well. He's a good kid, and uh, you know what? They're they're they have the same goal, they have the same dream, but they're there to support each other and push each other uh, in a positive manner. Yeah, it's such an interesting dynamic. And uh, in the summer when we had Kev on, we we wanted to get Mads at the same time. It just didn't work out with the time zones because he was back in Denmark. Uh, but even like Joey Decord posted, uh, I saw on social media just you know congratulating Kevin. And it's so interesting because at the time during the rebuild, there was so much change. And here are three goalies, and there's only one spot, maybe two for for both in the organization. And you see them still supporting each other and kind of banning together when it would be easy to look at them as competition just like another team and say i need to beat you but it's it's a really cool dynamic i, I love seeing it in action no but you know what they, they understand the situation and uh at the end of the line you know what it doesn't matter what the other one does if you don't play well you don't do your job it, it's not helping you so the other guy could you know matt's could be playing well or not well it doesn't help kev kev's got to do his job matt's got to do their job and I told them both, if you guys do it together and push yourselves to be better, you'll both are going to benefit from it. So, like, you know, one day it might be you and Mats in the NHL, you, in Ottawa. Nobody knows. We go day by day. Yeah, and, it, and it's just so incredible. Like, when you look at normally a, a player, a goalie, especially in Mando's position – He's going to have a veteran in that same position to lean on. You know, he's going to have the the starting goalie that's been there for years and he can lean on him. What do I do? How do I get through this? But you see a situation last night where it's two guys in their early 20s with only, what, three NHL games between them combined. And Mando, this is his debut. And Mando, talk or go ahead, Ross. Yeah, I was going to say they doubled their career starts between the pair from Monday to Wednesday. Yeah, it's just, it's wild that that's the scenario they're in. But I think that's a moment where you're so glad you got your best buddy with you there because that shot, uh, I think it was a commercial break that the camera showed of um, Kevin and Mads talking on the bench. No one's nervous, you know, no one's uh, worried. They're telling jokes. Uh, Mads is nodding along and saying, you're doing great. And that's the kind of thing where you don't necessarily need a veteran. You just need someone there that, you know, has your back and uh, for two young goalies to have each other's back. And they're the two goalies in Ottawa now. Like there, there's no, there's no reinforcements for a while. These two are going to have to hold it down. And I don't think you could ask for a much better start from both of them than what we've seen. No, well, not at all. Go ahead, Luciano. Well, exactly. And, and you know, that I was, that's what I was going to mention that clip where you see that, you know, they're 22 years old. They're in the NHL. One's playing, one's on the bench, and these guys are laughing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in the stands. My heart's going 150 beats per minute because <laughs> I'm nervous, and these guys here are laughing. But, you know, it's a credit to them. It's a credit to their relationship and 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 how they're there to support each other in, in, you know, different times. You know, they've both had injuries. They've both had their ups and downs, especially this year. Uh, so, you know, they help each other, they push each other to be better. So for me, it's, it's, it's like, I, I, I couldn't ask for more. Luciano Mandalazzi, the father of Sens goaltender, Kevin. And my final question for you, 
is were there ever any close calls before? Because Kevin's been a backup a couple times, a few different uh, where he comes up and sits on the bench. Like Joey Decord got in last minute for his first start. I know that after warmups, but have you ever been close to getting in the car full sprint or having to find an airplane? I was always ready on every call up, but you know, we, we never know. Right. So I was always ready, but from what I know, because my son doesn't tell me everything. Sometimes I find out more from his girlfriend than from him. But anyway, <laughs> that's a side note. And it was Kevin that told me, why do you say these things? But anyways, it's, uh, no, uh, not that I know of. We're always ready. Uh, there may have been a game, I think, on his last call-up where he may have gone a game. But, you know, yeah. uh, I think uh, Fosberg played a hell of a game uh, the Friday night. And, I think you got a uh, shout-out, right, Pilsy? Yep, shout out. Oh. Yeah, so they, they, <laughs> they came back with him the next night, which is 100% understandable. If I was a goalie dad, that's what I would want. So uh, that was 100% understandable. But uh, besides that, no, uh, I don't think so. But we're always ready. <laughs> Absolutely. And and you mentioned you're a goalie dad there. So final question for me here. And thanks so much for joining us. This has been an absolute blast. Oh, we love we love getting the emotion. Uh as a goalie dad, there, I feel like goalies are a dying breed. And I mean, for, for a, a good uh, reason, it's expensive, it's stressful, it's uh, it's tough to uh, get them ice time, it's tough to get all their equipment, especially when they're growing every year. You're a goalie dad of two goalies. What advice would you give to uh, parents out there, especially the dads that are dealing with young goalies growing up? Dealing with hey, don't, don't have two goalies, don't have two sons that are... Goalie. yeah <laughs> my my kids like it, it was weird because my my uh my middle son jeremy is like two and a half years older than than kev but kev grew so fast that i couldn't even do hand-me-downs oh, yeah so that's was crazy every, every and you know what i i played goalie and street hockey goalie when i was young so that was okay. said but i love goalie equipment I'm like who doesn't yep. right well I know who doesn't, the parents that have to pay for it, but <laughs> so like we used to go to the stores and it's like, wow, this is nice. We'll get these ones. So every year I, I used to get a, a new kit every year. Wow. Just because I liked it. I guess I was paying myself a treat more than them, yeah. but they, they liked it because they were getting new equipment every year, but I had no choice with Kev. He grew so fast all the time, but, but no, it, listen, you know what? I, I, we never stopped it. It was actually my wife's idea to get the kids into hockey, even though it's my favorite sport. Yep. And uh, don't regret one bit. It's it's hard being a goalie dad because, you know, it's always the last line of defense and you're only good as your last game. Uh, I always enjoyed watching my defenseman son play, Samuel, because it's always that less much stress <laughs> than a goalie dad. But... Listen, you know what? He enjoys the position. I think he started playing that position because of his other brother. And uh, it's, it's you know what? Just just make sure your heart is healthy. <laughs> what a perfect way to end it off. Luciano, I really appreciate you taking some time. I know it's been such a busy 48 hours, a whirlwind, but... Your son's an NHL goalie. That's that's awesome. Nobody can take that away from him. And not only that, he went out there and showed out and played a great game. And we're yep. looking forward to his next opportunity because he's shown he can take advantage of it. Uh, he must be so proud. And uh, congratulations to you and your entire family. Hey, thanks for having me on. Thanks for all the good work you guys do on the show because we do follow you all the time. And uh, listen, uh, we'll hope for another game. But uh, thanks for having me on. And uh, thanks for being there, guys all right you're listening to locked on senators i'm ross levitan with me brandon pillar stick taps to luciano that was an awesome interview eh pills so good. And Ross, we before the interview, we thought, okay, should we line up some questions? How do we want this interview to go? And then we just said, let's just keep handing the mic off to him. Tell us how you feel. How did this feel? Like we just wanted to feel the emotions of not only a hockey dad, but a goalie dad. That is an entirely different breed of uh, responsibility, stress, everything that goes along with being a goalie parent. So we can't thank him enough for joining us as that brings a whole new flavor to the podcast. And if you've listened to any of our interviews with Kevin, 
you can see where he gets uh, a lot of uh, his good personality and good spirits from. Let me tell you about tomorrow at the Glebe Central Pub. See you there, Pilsy, tomorrow at the Glebe Central Pub. Friday at the Glebe Central Pub. That's where you can find us. We'll be there 3 o'clock. We're not messing around here. We're getting there at 3 o'clock. We'll be there welcoming everyone, having a few. I don't care whether you're drinking water, wine, chocolate milk. Kevin, I know you love your chocolate milk. Whether it's juice, don't care. Come with a good time. We're going to have a great time. Becca's going to be there as well. A lot of Central Citizens are going to be there. And we're really looking forward to hanging out with you at the Glebe Central Pub. Live show starts at 4 o'clock. Okay, 4 o'clock. For some reason, they're going to turn the mics on for Pillsy and I, and we'll see what comes out, buddy. I don't know (laughs) what I'm going to say. But we're going to have some fun. Oh, yeah. It's, it's going to be so much fun. This is going to be one of those episodes. If you guys remember when Ross and I um, did a podcast in the Levitan studio where it's more just a lot of vibes, a lot of chit chat, uh, hanging out. We want you to feel like you're a part of the show because you are a part of the show and we couldn't do the show without you. So it's going to be an ultimate vibe uh, at the Gleep Central Pub. We're going to be doing trivia. We're going to get some chants going. We're going to have prizes. It's I mean, it's you can't beat it. You can't beat it. So we can't wait to see everyone there. So on that note, we do have prizes. We have two tickets to give away for the St. Louis Blues visit to Ottawa on Sunday. How's that? Real nice seats. Credit to our our guy. Our guy. Absolute pleasure knowing Rob over the last little while. And he's been generous enough to donate his tickets for Sunday's game. So we'll have that. Doodling Daryl's going to bring one of his Zoop shirts. And we'll have our own Locked on Sends merch as well but pilsy the trivia is going to be great the only thing if you're coming on friday bring some chris neal memories because i'm going to be passing around the mic i want people to get their chris neal stories out whether it's a time that you met chris neal whether you were able to to watch and beat the wheels off of someone and it really resonated with you i want to know like when he broke um ty domi's uh or sorry that was mcgrath but when he probably broke a few noses over his day uh or if it's that huge hit on Johnny Boychuk, whatever it is. I, I need some Chris Neal memories as we're going into Chris Neal Jersey Retirement Night. And it all starts at the Glebe Central Pub. Yep. Bus 1 is going to leave at 5 o'clock latest. For, like, get on the bus, 445. 5 o'clock it leaves. Second bus will be 530. So if, you're, if you have to work and you don't care to be at the Chris Neal ceremony right at 6 o'clock. Like, the banner's not going up at 6. There's going to be a whole spiel. You're in all likelihood going to be all good, but Pilsy, we just want to make sure people are aware that the first bus, I'm going to say, is all but guaranteed, unless there's, God forbid, something, an accident or whatever on the highway that will be there in plenty of time for uh, the 6 o'clock start to the ceremony. But if people are like, oh, I'll get to the ceremony when I get there, then the second bus is available as well. Yep, and uh, we're doing everything we can to make things run smoothly. This is just a, a part of the the operation, and we're going to get everyone to and from the game. It's just going to be at different times, and we're all coming back to the Glebe Central Pub after. And if the vibes are right, we will probably do a postcast live at the Glebe Central Pub because they are our postcast sponsors. So definitely make sure you guys are ready. Make sure you get lots of water in you. Make sure you get your food. Make sure you're ready for a good time, a good night's sleep tonight, Ross, as everyone needs to be well-rested for this incredible day we have planned. Can't wait. Glebe Central Pub. It's all brought to you by the Glebe Central Pub. 779 Bank Street is where you can find them and find us tomorrow. Can't wait to see you there. It's the Glebe Central Pub. Now, Pilsy, on that note, on that note, I need to discuss with you who is going to get into a fight tomorrow and do the Chris Neal two-arm wave to the crowd. I knew, I mean, he's told us in interviews before, told people in interviews before, he did that to show his mom that he was okay yep. after a fight. But somebody needs to take the hat and give it a hat tip to Chris Neal and do that on Friday night. You know what? I wish Mark Kaslick was here because that would be the guy I would want. Obviously, Brady, that would be the ultimate show. But, I mean, you want the guy that leads your team in points on the ice as much as possible. So, I don't exactly love that. And then, I'd love to say Waddy, but... We'll, we'll see. I, I'm going to go undercover. Like, who's a guy who would get it? Right? Because... I could Brady's the guy, and you just heard Lu, Luciano Mandelazzi say, like, he, 
How about that? Brady coming out to congratulate the kid's family after the game. I should say kid, they're the same draft class. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Timmy. <laughs> I know. Timmy's He's said like, congrats, that. kid. Yeah. All, all, whenever the kids come up, they do this. It's like, dude, they're older than you, Timmy. It's awesome. <laughs> um, but wow, I just walked myself into that one. But really mature move there from, uh, from Brady to do that. But I'm just trying to think, like, could it be one of those big burly defensemen, like a little, like Hamannick? Yeah, Hamnick would be a guy that would Ham Hamnick would have played Neil, right? Definitely. Yeah. As an Islander. Yeah, hundred percent. For sure. Yeah. So he, he would be a guy that definitely gets it. But yeah, I think Ross for me, I, I'm gonna do um some deeper diving into Chris Neal memories to kind of refresh myself. But every time I think about Chris Neal, I think about the the arms up after the fight. I mean it's iconic. It's a, like it's even a celebration in Chell after a fight. So like that that's how widespread that is and how deep that is. So there's there's so many reasons why Sens fans love Flesherton native Chris Neal. I really would love to see Brady Kachuk do it. It would just make my day. You know what else could make my day? A win. The Go Sens on. right now have six wins in the last seven games. Coming up tomorrow on Locked On Senators, we'll be live. We'll be in the same room. And we're going to talk about the lines going into tomorrow's game and which yep. players we're wa watching. And and I'm just fired up. The, the vibes are going to be at an all, all time high tomorrow. So make sure you tune in to that show. Any final thoughts here as uh, we get set to head to Ottawa? Final thoughts are I, I know I'm not a born and raised Ottawa guy, so it's not coming home for me, but. I just can't thank everyone that uh, comes to these meet and greets that supports the show. Like it's weird, Ross. It really does feel like a second home. I, I know I can't get the street names right of where all the shawarma palace uh, nine locations are, uh, but it, it just feels great. It really feels like we're welcome there. And uh, we're trying to build up this community of Sens fans as much as we can. And we couldn't do it without you guys. So I, I, I know it's, it's about us and it's our show and it's our sponsors and everything, but it's really about you guys. So we, we're doing this to um, to prop everyone up and to keep the vibes high because there's a lot of crazy stuff happening in this world. And it's great to have an escape to uh, just focus on hockey and good times. And that's what we're here for. Boots on the bus. We will see everyone on Friday. But of course, we'll have an episode early. So we're going to do the same thing. We're recording Friday's episode on Thursday night, full disclosure. And Friday, it's it's green light. It's it's an absolute green light. It's what Chris Neal would want. Let's put Big it down. Green light. Yep. For Brandon Pillar, I'm Ross Levitan. This has been the Locked On Senators Podcast. Your team every day. <laughs>